The Greek Dark Age, also called Greek Dark Ages, Homeric Age named for the fabled poet, Homer or Geometric Period so called after the characteristic geometric art of the time, is the period of Greek history from the end of the Mycenaean palatial civilization around 1100 BC to the first signs of the Greek polis, city-states, in the 9th century BC. The archaeological evidence shows a widespread collapse of Bronze Age civilization in the eastern Mediterranean world at the outset of the period, as the great palaces and cities of the Mycenaeans were destroyed or abandoned. Around then, the Hittite civilization suffered serious disruption and cities from Troy to Gaza were destroyed. Following the collapse, fewer and smaller settlements suggest famine and depopulation. In Greece, the Linear B writing of the Greek language used by Mycenaean bureaucrats ceased. The decoration on Greek pottery after about 1100 BC lacks the figurative decoration of Mycenaean ware and is restricted to simpler, generally geometric styles 1000 to 700 BC. It was previously thought that all contact was lost between mainland Hellenes and foreign powers during this period, yielding little cultural progress or growth, but artifacts from excavations at Lefkondi on the Lelantine Plain in Euboea show that significant cultural and trade links with the east, particularly the Levant coast, developed from c. 900 BC onwards. Additionally, evidence has emerged of the new presence of Hellenes in sub-Mycenaean Cyprus and on the Syrian coast at Almina. Topic. Fall of Mycenaeans The Mycenaean civilization started to collapse from 1200 BC. Archaeology suggests that, around 1100 BC, the palace centers and outlying settlements of the Mycenaeans' highly organized culture began to be abandoned or destroyed, and by 1050 BC, the recognizable features of Mycenaean culture had disappeared, and the population had decreased significantly. Many explanations attribute the fall of the Mycenaean civilization and the Bronze Age collapse to climatic or environmental catastrophe, combined with an invasion by Dorians or by the Sea Peoples, or to the widespread availability of edged weapons of iron, but no single explanation fits the available archaeological evidence. <laughs> Mediterranean warfare and Sea Peoples Around this time large-scale revolts took place in several parts of the eastern Mediterranean, and attempts to overthrow existing kingdoms were made as a result of economic and political instability by surrounding people, who were already plagued with famine and hardship. Part of the Hittite kingdom was invaded and conquered by the so-called Sea Peoples, whose origins, perhaps from different parts of the Mediterranean such as the Black Sea, the Aegean and Anatolian regions, remain obscured. The 13th and 12th century inscriptions and carvings at Karnak and Luxor are the only sources for Sea Peoples, a term invented by the Egyptians themselves and recorded in boastful accounts of Egyptian military successes. For these so called Sea Peoples, there is little more evidence than these inscriptions. The foreign countries made a conspiracy in their islands. All at once the lands were on the move, scattered in war. No country could stand before their arms. Their league was Pelset, Chukur, Shekelesh, Denyan and Weshesh. A similar assemblage of peoples may have attempted to invade Egypt twice, once during the reign of Merneptah, about 1208 BC, and again during the reign of Ramesses III, about 1178 BC. Culture With the collapse of the palatial centers, no more monumental stone buildings were built and the practice of wall painting may have ceased, writing in the Linear B script ceased, vital trade links were lost, and towns and villages were abandoned. Writing in the Linear B script ceased particularly because the redistributive economy had crashed, and there was no longer a need to keep records in Linear B script. The population of Greece was reduced, and the world of organized state armies, kings, officials, and redistributive systems disappeared. Most of the information about the period comes from burial sites and the grave goods contained within them. The fragmented, localized and autonomous cultures of reduced complexity are noted for such diversity of their material cultures in pottery styles conservative in Athens, eclectic at Gnosis, burial practices and settlement structures. The pottery style, protogeometric style signaled the loss of previous designs that were more complex. These newer designs were simpler, including only lines and curves, signaling a simplified society. Generalizations about the Dark Age society 
are generally considered false, because the various cultures throughout Greece cannot be grouped into a large, Dark Age society category. Tholos tombs are found in early Iron Age Thessaly and in Crete but not in general elsewhere, and cremation is the dominant rite in Attica but nearby in the Argolid, it was inhumation. Some former sites of Mycenaean palaces, such as Argos or Gnosis, continued to be occupied. The fact that other sites experienced an expansive boom time of a generation or two before they were abandoned has been associated by James Whitley with the big man social organization, which is based on personal charisma and is inherently unstable. He interprets Lefkandi in this light. Some regions in Greece, such as Attica, Euboea, and central Crete, recovered economically from these events faster than others, but life for the poorest Greeks would have remained relatively unchanged as it had done for centuries. There was still farming, weaving, metalworking and pottery but at a lower level of output and for local use in local styles. Some technical innovations were introduced around 1050 BC with the start of the protogeometric style 1050 to 900 BC, such as the superior pottery technology that included a faster potter's wheel for superior vase shapes and the use of a compass to draw perfect circles and semicircles for decoration. Better glazes were achieved by higher temperature firing of clay. However, the overall trend was towards simpler, less intricate pieces and fewer resources being devoted to the creation of beautiful art. The smelting of iron was learned from Cyprus and the Levant and was exploited and improved upon by using local deposits of iron ore previously ignored by the Mycenaeans. Edged weapons were now within reach of less elite warriors. Though the universal use of iron was one shared feature among Dark Age settlements, it is still uncertain when the forged iron weapons and armor achieved superior strength to those that had been previously cast and hammered from bronze. From 1050, many small local iron industries appeared, and by 900, almost all weapons in grave goods were made of iron. The distribution of the Ionic Greek dialect in historic times indicates early movement from the mainland of Greece to the Anatolian coast to such sites as Miletus, Ephesus, and Colophon, perhaps as early as 1000, but the contemporaneous evidence is scant. In Cyprus, some archaeological sites begin to show identifiably Greek ceramics, a colony of Euboean Greeks was established at Almina on the Syrian coast, and a reviving Aegean Greek network of exchange can be detected from 10th century Attic protogeometric pottery found in Crete and at Samos, off the coast of Asia Minor. <laughs> Post Mycenaean Cyprus Cyprus was inhabited by a mix of Pelasgians and Phoenicians, joined during this period by the first Greek settlements. Potters in Cyprus initiated the most elegant new pottery style of the 10th and 9th centuries, the Cypro-Phoenician black on red style of small flasks and jugs that held precious contents, probably scented oil. Together with distinctively Greek Euboean ceramic wares, it was widely exported and is found in Levantine sites, including Tyre and far inland in the late 11th and 10th centuries. Cypriot metalwork was exchanged in Crete. Topic. Society It is likely that Greece during this period was divided into independent regions organized by kinship groups and the oikoi or households, the origins of the later polis. Excavations of Dark Age communities such as Nicoria in the Peloponnese have shown how a Bronze Age town was abandoned in 1150 BC but then re-emerged as a small village cluster by 1075 BC. At this time there were only around 40 families living there with plenty of good farming land and grazing for cattle. The remains of a 10th century building, including a megaron, on the top of the ridge have led to speculation that this was the chieftain's house. This was a larger structure than those surrounding it but it was still made from the same materials mud brick and thatched roof. It was perhaps also a place of religious significance and of communal storage of food. High status individuals did in fact exist in the Dark Age, but their standard of living was not significantly higher than others of their village. Most Greeks did not live in isolated farmsteads but in small settlements. It is likely that, as at the dawn of the historical period two or three hundred years later, the main economic resource for each family was the ancestral plot of land of the oikos, the kleros or allotment, without this a man could not marry. Lefkandi burial 
Lefkandi on the island of Euboea was a prosperous settlement in the Late Bronze Age, possibly to be identified with Old Eritrea. It recovered quickly from the collapse of Mycenaean culture, and in 1981 excavators of a burial ground found the largest 10th century building yet known from Greece. Sometimes called the Haroon, this long narrow building, 50 meters by 10 meters, or about 150 feet by 30 feet, contained two burial shafts. In one were placed four horses and the other contained a cremated male buried with his iron weapons and an inhumed woman, heavily adorned with gold jewelry. The man's bones were placed in a bronze jar from Cyprus, with hunting scenes on the cast rim. The woman was clad with gold coils in her hair, rings, gold breast plates, an heirloom necklace an elaborate Cypriot or Near Eastern necklace made some 200 to 300 years before her burial and an ivory-handled dagger at her head. The horses appeared to have been sacrificed, some appearing to have iron bits in their mouths. No evidence survives to show whether the building was erected to house the burial, or whether the hero or local chieftain in the grave was cremated and then buried in his grand house. Whichever is true, the house was soon demolished and the debris used to form a roughly circular mound over the wall stumps. Within the next few years and down to about 820 BC, rich members of the community were cremated and buried close to the eastern end of the building, in much the same way as Christians might seek to be buried close to a saint's grave. The presence of imported objects, notable throughout more than 80 further burials, contrast with other nearby cemeteries at Lefkandi and attest to a lasting elite tradition. End The archaeological record of many sites demonstrates that the economic recovery of Greece was well advanced by the beginning of the 8th century BC. Both cemeteries such as the Keramikos in Athens or Lefkandi and sanctuaries such as Olympia, recently founded Delphi or the Herion of Samos, first of the colossal freestanding temples, are richly provided with offerings, including items from the Near East, from Egypt and from Italy made of exotic materials such as amber or ivory. Also, exports of Greek pottery demonstrate contact with the Levant coast at such sites as Almina and with the region of the Villanovan culture to the north of Rome. The decoration of pottery becomes more and more elaborate and includes figured scenes that parallel the stories of Homeric epic. Iron tools and weapons become better in quality, while renewed Mediterranean trade must have brought new supplies of copper and tin to make a wide range of elaborate bronze objects, such as tripod stands like those offered as prizes in the funeral games celebrated by Achilles for Patroclus. Other coastal regions of Greece besides Euboea were once again full participants in the commercial and cultural exchanges of the eastern and central Mediterranean, while communities developed which were governed by an elite group of aristocrats rather than by the single basilis or chieftain of earlier periods. <laughs> New writing system By the mid to late 8th century BC, a new alphabet system was adopted from the Phoenicians by a Greek with first-hand experience of it. The Greeks adapted the abjad used to write Phoenician, notably introducing characters for vowel sounds and thereby creating the first truly alphabetic writing system. The new alphabet quickly spread throughout the Mediterranean and was used to write not only the Greek language, but also Phrygian and other languages in the Eastern Mediterranean. As Greece sent out colonies west towards Sicily and Italy Pithikosi, Cumi, the influence of their new alphabet extended further. The ceramic Euboean artifact inscribed with a few lines written in the Greek alphabet referring to Nestor's cup, discovered in a grave at Pithikosi Ischia, dates from c. 730 BC, it seems to be the oldest written reference to the Iliad. The Etruscans benefited from the innovation, old Italic variants spread throughout Italy from the 8th century. Other variants of the alphabet appear on the Lemnos steel and in the alphabets of Asia Minor. The previous linear scripts were not completely abandoned. The Cypriot syllabary, descended from Linear A, remained in use on Cyprus in Arcado Cypriot Greek and Aetia Cypriot inscriptions until the Hellenistic era. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Continuity thesis. Some scholars have argued against the concept of a Greek Dark Age, on grounds that the former lack of archaeological evidence in a period that was mute in its lack of inscriptions thus, dark, has been shown to be an accident of discovery rather than a fact of history. See also Dark Ages in History 
Topic. References. Topic. Bibliography. Chu, Sing C. World Ecological Degradation, Accumulation, Urbanization and Deforestation 3000 BC, AD 2000, 2001, ISBN 0 7591 0031 4. Chapter 3 The Second Millennium Bronze Age, Crete and Mycenaean Greece 1700 BC 1200 BC. Desborough, V. R. Da, 1972. The Greek Dark Ages. Fauconau, Jean, Les Pupils de la Mer et leur Histoire, Paris, Larmatin, 2003. Hurwitt, Geoffrey M., The Art and Culture of Early Greece 1100-480 BC, Cornell University Press, 1985, Chapters 1-3. Langdon, Susan, Art and Identity in Dark Age Greece, 1100-700 BC, Cambridge University Press, 2010. Ladich, J. Between Troy and Homer, the so-called Dark Ages in Greece. In Storia, Poesia e Pensiera nel Mondo Antico. Studi in Honor di M. Giganti, Rome, 1994. Roll, David. The Lords of Avarice. Arrow Books, 2008. Snodgrass, Anthony M. C. 2000. The Dark Age of Greece: An Archaeological Survey of the 11th to the 8th Centuries BC. New York, Routledge. ISBN 0-415-93635-7. Sanders, N.K. C. 1978. The Sea Peoples, Warriors of the Ancient Mediterranean 1250-1150 BC. London, Thames and Hudson. ISBN 0-500-02085-X. Whitley, James, Style and Society in Dark Age Greece, The Changing Face of a Pre-Literate Society, 1100-700 BC, Cambridge University Press, 2003, Series, New Studies in Archaeology. <laughs>